Hi Stampin' Friends, it's Chris Slogar from BuckeyeInklings.com and today I have a clean recording for you of what we did in the Buckeye Inkling Stampers group last night on Facebook Live. I like to transfer projects over to YouTube when I can. I think they're easier to find on YouTube and um, YouTube keeps a good library of projects. Uh, they don't always make it, so you might want to check out that group. I'd love to have you join and then you'll get notices of all my videos. I do try to cross-reference everything I do, whether on YouTube or Facebook, um, through my site at BuckeyeInklings.com. And you can also find a link to the online store there if there are any products that you see me use that you'd like to purchase. I'd greatly appreciate um, any support there so I can keep bringing you these ideas. Okay, so our projects last night were these card projects and they're double pocket cards. So they have a deep pocket on the back here and then a shallower pocket up front that I've designed to hold a gift card. Now you could put another like tea bag or something else that's quite flat, maybe a bookmark or something else in that front pocket, um, whatever you can think of. But I like this idea because I do a lot of gift cards and I've made it in two forms. I've made it from an eight and a half inch square, which is this one, the yellow and orange stripe. And I've also made it from an eight and a half inch circle. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. Um, I think it's pretty easy for some of you to get big circles because you can um, cut them with your electronic cutters quite easily. So I, I like that different look and these two are so closely related. I'll show you how to do both. Um, but also, uh, to, to give you an idea of a different look, because I really feel like this is a project that's adaptable to many other themes, um, I've made this as well with the Parisian Blossoms designer paper. And instead of just having this open and the gift card showing, on the front I added a scalloped rectangle to make a flap. And then there would be a pocket here for you know, whatever, your gift card, and the same pocket in the back for the note card. Okay, so just to give you a different idea um, and a way to, to change that up if you want something that maybe looks, you know, a little more formal or use it with different papers, uh, you can get a totally different look. Okay, so let me get started. Like I said, um, I used an eight and a half inch. We'll, we'll start with the square one an eight and a half inch square, and we're going to score it. Now pay attention to the direction of, you know, if either if either side of the paper has a directional print, you'll wanna pay attention and put the top to the top edge of your scoring tool, okay? And you will notice um, in our design, okay, you'll see this paper to, in this section is going the right way and the back is right side up um, but this fold up section at the bottom the print will be upside down which I don't think is a really big deal I mean it's cute and it goes together nicely and it's mostly covered by your gift card but you do want to make sure for purposes especially of the back that you have the top of the print to the top of the um, score tool when you make these first scores because we're gonna score the side score lines at two and one eighth and six and three eighths. Okay, so that's two and one eighth from each edge of the paper. And then we're gonna turn that top over to the left side, okay? And then we need the long distance of the card, which will be five and a half inches, and we're gonna score at five and a half inches, okay? And then that's all the scoring. So I'm going to um, turn in and burnish those sides. And if you need to, um, you know, make sure you're forcing them to meet nicely. That will make a difference in this project. So I'm just, turn, you know, making sure that they come together and I'm burnishing when I'm happy with how they meet up. And sometimes you can, you know, force it a little bit if it's not meeting up perfectly. 
And then this bottom score, we're also going to burnish. And you'll see, now these are the sides that are folding in. And then what we need to do to um, get the reverse side of the print around the front of the card, I'm just going to take my snips and cut along that score line um, just until you meet the intersecting score line. All right, and you want to make a nice straight line at the bottom of what will be, um, let me show you, the, the bottom edge, that will be the, the bottom of the front of your card. All right, so make that one nice and straight, and then on the longer section, you can make a little wedge cut here so that you have a little less bulk at that fold. Okay, so when it all folds up, um, there won't be a lot of a lot of bulk in the fold. Okay, so again, on the other side, we're making our nice, straight, pretty cut first here, and that will be the bottom of the card. And then we're gonna take a little wedge out of the longer, the longer side. Okay, and then we're gonna turn these in, and you'll see how these come together. And then when we fold this up these sides come together like this and this is where i was talking about having the nice straight cut okay and the wedge is here to stay out of the way of the fold okay so very simply now we're just going to turn down these corners and i'm i'm bringing that top edge um, just short of the score line, okay? Because I don't want to get in the way of the fold there. I don't want to be, um, I don't want to encroach on that fold. And I'm doing the same thing on this side. I'm, I'm folding that top edge down and just bringing it inside of the score line. And then those will match up in the front. And then you're doing the same thing down here. Um, in this case, we're folding back this way and meeting, not quite meeting the score line. Okay, so you can see how that will go. All right, and then we need to do this one as well. And Okay, so when you fold this all up, now we've got the look that we're going for here. And all you need to attach on the on the big on the big sides, we're going to tack down the triangles at the top and fold that in. Now this is a pocket. Nothing here, nothing else needs to be adhered because this bottom edge will be made when we fold up the front pocket, okay? So there's no other adhesive needed for the back pocket. On the front pocket, we're going to lock down these triangles as well. And then we do need adhesive along this bottom edge to make the bottom edge of the pocket. So I'm gonna do a fine line of glue and then let that dry a second. Okay, and then we will attach the back of that front pocket to um, the, the front of the back pocket, if that makes sense. Okay, but to do that, we're gonna be careful not to have any adhesive that would seep into this seam, okay? Because we don't wanna, we don't wanna lock that pocket shut. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put my adhesive, I'm gonna stay short of the center line here and put my adhesive on the sides and on the top, but making sure I'm not hitting that center line because I don't want any adhesive to tuck in there and lock that pocket down. Okay, so that is basically it. You can see we've got the pocket for the 
gift card. And then the inner card here is a piece of cardstock. This is Mango Melody that measures five by three and three quarters. And then the Whisper White is four and seven eighths by three and five eighths. And I have a lot of pieces ready to go here and made. Um, I am using for the front of the card, these dies um, are the stitched sweetly, stitch so sweetly dies. There's a set of 10 dies that has six stitched scalloped rectangles and then four of these great little um label shapes okay so i've got i've got two of those label shapes and i'm using the second to smallest of the stitched scalloped rectangles okay so let me let me grab the um stamps and finish up this I've got from Bonanza Buddies, let's celebrate you on the inside. And we'll do the balloon in Coastal Cabana. And let's see, the, the string in Memento Black. And let's see, I can do the greeting on the front as well. That was happy birthday in the terracotta tile. And I've already made my lion. So we can, um, let's see, let's put this all together now. What we're going to do is take the, the inner card and mat it, mat the Whisper White piece to the Mango Melody piece. And we can tuck that away already. Now, I do like to have um, a little finger hold here. I just use my one inch circle punch and take a little nip out of the top of that, the, the, the back edge so that it's kind of easier to grab the note card. And then I'm going to carefully attach this piece, okay? There's a big area here where uh, you don't want any adhesive, right? Because the back of that would stick to the note card. So what I'm going to do, I'll just put um, some of my glue in a triangle shape here to pick up the parts of this label shape that I want. Like so. And then the same thing, um, if, you, if you get in the way of this V here, um, make sure you don't put adhesive on the back of the stitched rectangle in that location. So I'm just going to put um, adhesive on the sides of my stitched rectangle, and then I know I won't get into trouble there. And then I am going to, let's see, I used white baker's twine here. I am going to use some of the daffodil ruched ribbon that comes with this um, birthday bonanza suite and just tie a knot over here instead, just for a different look. Okay, now had I wanted to make a flap instead, um, you know, like the Parisian example that I showed you had this flap on the front of the card. Uh, before I put this pocket into place, I would have added my stitched rectangle, okay? So I would score, let me just do that. I would score. Uh, I'm going to move two scallops in. I've got a line darkened here at 10 inches. So I'm putting, I'm putting that scallop right there on 10 inches. Um, I'm, I'm going to score two scallops over from the edge. And then I'll make a, a fold. So had I wanted to put that pocket piece in place like I did on this one, I would have tucked that in before I secured the bottom pocket in place. 
all right but here we are we're just adding our designs to the outside on this card and I'll just put dimensionals out of the way of the ribbon here and put that in place put that greeting in place let me see rotate that knot over a bit And once you're happy with the knot location, you can put a little glue dot under that if you like. Okay, and then I've got my lion. Uh, I forgot his little tassel, though. I have um, the pom-poms here. And I'll just add a little dot of glue to add a pom-pom. And a present. I've pre-stamped that present. Uh, so let me just pop that up on the dimensional. Okay, and that is the square version. Of this double pocket card. Now let me at least get started on the round version. And if you prefer that and you have an easy way to make circles i think you'll like having that different look okay let's make that one um i picked a different designer paper um also from that bonanza birthday bonanza this is the one with the two cans so uh we're going for this look now with the rounded top so you want to make sure again the pattern is at the, the the top of the pattern is at the top of your scoring tool and then you're scoring at two and one eighth again let me use the larger end of the stylus and six and three eighths and then you're going to turn that so that the top is over to the side here and we need to score at five and a half. Now, we want to be perpendicular to those lines that we just made, and that's a little bit hard to do when you have a circle going on. So I'm just gonna take my ruler and make sure in each case I am level, um, that I can see that this score line is level. <laughs> then I just moved it. Um, just to make sure we're going perpendicular there. All right, because that's hard to tell on a circle. And then we're scoring at five and a half. Okay, so same, essentially the same thing we did with the rectangle. And we're going to fold in the sides. They should just about meet in the middle and fold up the bottom just like we did. Okay, and then um, same same idea. On the side, we're gonna cut, we're gonna cut a really straight line along the score. And then from the bigger upper section, we can wedge out a bit to make that a uh, little, little flatter in the fold. Okay, so real straight line there. You can do that on your trimmer if you prefer. And then wedge out a little piece. Okay, now we don't need to do, like in this case, we had to fold in those, those hard corners. We've got a nice rounded surface here. So this is ready to go. We don't have to um, fold in and lock down triangles. And this is ready to go too. We're just going to turn this and finish. Oh, that's not the way I wanted to do it. Wait, let me go back. I want... I wanted the two cans to show up a lot up here. And then they will be upside down here in the pocket area, but that will be mostly covered. Okay, now in this case, we just have this tiny area of um, pocket. And if you're not happy with how straight you've cut, you can correct that. Um, tiny area where the pocket bottom will be created. So I'm just putting my, my glue, my adhesive along that edge. 
and locking that down. And then we also need to be careful in here that we only have adhesive where it will connect to the, the toucan side of the, of the paper, right? So just kind of eyeballing that, I'm gonna have a little adhesive along the top and on the sides and on the other side as well, okay? So that pocket bottom will be created by this flap and we've got that all locked down now and we've created two pockets. In this case, you're gonna to have to be a little more careful when you attach these pieces, okay? There's less, less to adhere to on your pocket here. So I'm just going to put um, adhesive up the sides and in a little triangle, okay? Because we wanna span this area so that that pocket isn't, isn't closed. Okay, and up here as well, we're going to be very careful uh, to only put adhesive in the areas where we're gonna connect to the white um, toucan side of the paper. So take a close look at that, where you want, where you want that to, where you want that glue to be. And it's basically just a little triangular section down here. Okay, so that you don't get in the way of the pocket. All right, so watch that carefully when you are adhering those together. Uh, let me grab my happy birthday. Well, I'm just gonna decorate now. So I actually, I have my toucan created. I'm gonna pop him up and I'm going to add a present here. This toucan I didn't stamp, I cut from the paper. So that's kind of fun, fun option. You can cut the lions from the paper too, but for some reason I love to make the lion. Okay, and let's see. I'm going to do this. Oh, this is also going to be terracotta tile. I didn't need to clean that. And in this case, I'll do uh, the white baker's twine. And I think you can see the rest. I don't need to go through all of the finishing steps, but I did kind of want to give you an idea of what will be different on this circle. You just basically have to be really careful about where you're adhering your pieces, okay? So we have that one, that one, and that one. And then of course, the version with the flap, if you want to add that flap, and that was made from the largest of the stitched scalloped rectangles in that, in that same Stitch So Sweetly Framelit set. Um, and then I used uh, layered with kindness and the and the cool little um, punches that come with that, along with the Parisian blossoms paper. Okay, and I I actually added a little piece of Velcro here too, so you can see without the flap it would be the same as the first one we did, but with the flap um, we've got just a whole different look. Just be careful if you do this with the Velcro, you've got to um, put that on very low on the flap so that it will intersect, it will meet where this um, triangle intersects here. Okay, so that's that. Thanks so much for checking out my cards. I, I just really love to present new projects. That's my favorite part of being a demo. Um, I really need your help with like, subscribing, and of course, shopping. So you can find a shop now button at BuckeyeInklings.com. You'll find a lot more projects there, as well as links to my Facebook and Instagram accounts. I appreciate any support um, on social media and, of course, in the online store. Thanks so much, guys.